President of Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has felicitated the former president, Muhammadu Buhari, on his 81st birthday yesterday, December 17th, describing him as, I quote, Nigeria's icon of integrity and patriotism, end of quote. Also, Buhari's accolades under the ages of Buhari have extolled the ex-leader's sterling qualities, especially his pro-people agenda and his Spartan lifestyle. In a statement made available to journalists, a notable Buharist and former Director General of Voice of Nigeria, uh, Osita Okechuku, recalled how Buhari raised the Marshall Plan to confront the challenge of food security in the country, regretting that insurgency slowed down the drive to make Nigeria food sufficient. Joining us now is Osita Okechuku, a notable Buharist, APC chieftain and former DG, Voice of Nigeria. Good morning, Ms. Okechuku, and good to see you on The Morning Show. Good morning, Sister Ayo. Good morning, Dr. Ruby. And good morning, Sashif Rufai. Good morning, sir. Merry good morning, Christmas. You are Ms. Okechuku, you are still on this uh, Buhari matter. We, uh, we have heard of Zikism, you know. When you say Zikism, they will tell you the Zikis. This is the philosophy behind it. We've heard of uh, Awoism. When you talk about Awoism, you know, people say, well, this is the guiding philosophy in specific terms. But Buharism, well, you say you are a Buharist or you are described as a Buharist. So this group of uh, Buharists, how many people are still there? Because Nigeria seems to have moved on. And what is the philosophy behind Buharism? That could, be, that could have a compelling reason for anybody. Anyway, happy birthday to him. Uh, by the way, I saw you know, a statement by you yesterday congratulating him on the occasion of his 81st birthday. Yes, fine. I can understand that. But worrisome would seem to be quite a surprising stretch. If you could just enlighten us. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ruby. And thank you immensely for your blog. And we join President Bola Tinubu in felicitating with Pre former President Buhari, our icon and leader. And we, the Buhari, sincerely subscribe to his ethos and his belief sincerely on the common man and policies that favor the common man. He displays those policies even as military head of state. If you cast your mind, you remember how he opposed the neoliberal policies of the IMF and the World Bank, and what is then called the Washington Consensus, and they dominate the environment. And Buhari's position was this, that the neoliberal ethos or the concept worked in the developed economies of the world, but that our economy is in infant stage or informal, that this would devalue our communal humanity. Where they said there's no business in business, Buhari's position is that how can somebody say government had no business in business? That we, the people, are sovereign and we are government. And that those who were abandoning the neoliberal policies were working on wrong assumption. That here is a country where the so called majority of the so called captains of industry have no pure water factory. Can you, in the real sense, call them captains of industry? It was one of the reasons why he was shoved aside in 1985. And barely a year after he was overthrown as a military head of state, the structural adjustment program was introduced, where they told us we have to devalue the Nara, we have to privatize state-owned enterprises, that the private sector will lead us to El Dorado. 30 years down the line, we have seen the disadvantages of the neoliberal policy that Buhari resisted. Paradoxically, 
who produced the richest African. But paradoxically, we became the world poverty capital. We are more polarized. We are more divided. Today, the gross inequality in the country is unbearable. The hardship over those years had multiplied. And Nigeria we could not locate the gains of the structural adjustment program. We have privatized our state-owned enterprises. We have privatized the electricity chain continuously. We remain in mm. deficit. When you looked at agriculture, Buhari said, OK, because the Naira have been devalued and further devalued, the best we could do is to enhance our agricultural production so that we could be in a position to have something to export. He engaged in the Ankoborowas program. And the Green Imperative program was almost in, fulf in fulfillment. What is the Green Imperative program saying? That all manner of agricultural implements had to be imported. To be situated in all the local governments of the country, 777 centers, with repair centers, and that it's work in harmony with the private sector so that the tractors and farm implements will be managed in such a manner that if a farmer rents or leases a tractor, if he gets spoiled, All right. they will return another tractor mm -hmm. to his farm. All right. So these are part of the qualities and what we call the Buharism, the pro-people agenda. All in right. Aousa, he's called a Memutani or, or Megaskia. Okay. He believed in people, and they had resisted policies against the common people. All right, thank you. I mean, I, I, can, I can understand where you're coming from in terms of the fact that you worked under the current administration. However, Mr. Okechu, could you not think it's a bit insensitive to the 133 million Nigerians who were, lived, who were um, plunged into poverty under this pro-people agenda of the former president, Muhammad Buhari, when you say that his policies were for the people? We had corruption at almost its peak during the last administration, even though he came into office on the mandate of anti-corruption, war against corruption. We had so many incidents around that, Transparency International, um, you know, scored Nigeria quite low, no improvements in that area. We know what happened with Ways and Means, with the CBN dollar, um, you know, the racketeering in the, with dollar rate. We know what happened with the um, stolen crude oil, crude oil theft and the likes. And then insecurity at almost its, its worst during the last administration. Do you not think it's insensitive to Nigerians who are still suffering from the previous administration, the policies you talk about, the Anko Boras initiative you talk about, a number of these policies were fraught with corruption. The National Social Registration fraught with corruption. Which areas would you say was pro-people when the people themselves are not seeing the benefits of the last administration? Uh, thank you very much, my sister Ayo. Uh, please, let me cast your mind. There is a saying in where I come from, that if you do not remember where the race started beating you, it will continue to beat you. I'm talking about 30 years down the line. You were not there when some of them were in universities. And the state, under a welfare system, funded us, made the university co conducive, made our humanity to be worthwhile. I remember at a certain point on a, a vacation, and they wrote to us and said, if you have anything to do in the campus, please notify the administration. And I wrote that I want to stay back in the campus. During the cross-check, the Dean of Student Affairs, he said, you're too political science. What are you doing in the campus? I said, I have a project. He said, no. I came from your department. There's no project at that age. Innocently, I told him that uh, the campus is better than where I was going, that I want to stay here once in a while. I can travel for a weekend. He said, come on, I will approve it. But don't tell me about project. We lived 
in a country where the Nigerian state took care of its citizens. The day we started to tell ourselves or what uh, Milton Friedman said, that when a thriving idea prevails, even those who are opposed to it become weak. The Nigerian people became weak and believed the wrong assumption that the, the captains of industry would, would deliver us to, to Eldorado. That Eldorado did not happen. Our poverty started to increase and magnify the day the government had no business again in, in, in business. That was the day our police force, our judiciary, even the health of the press. These were part of the struggles of what led to the death of Delegiwa. The media health was attacked. Free press was attacked. Don't, don't forget that even today when people criticize your medium, they are criticizing your medium for standing truth, for confronting truth. So it did, it did start in the Buhari era. We, instead of investing our oil windfalls, they told us, don't, don't bother yourself, share it. The day you started sharing money as cash, what have you done? You have corrupted the system. You have dis dislocated your infrastructure. And the so-called private uh, captains of industry were not there. Those who bought our state-owned enterprises had no capacity. And the day it happened, the issue of the dislocation you talked about, the issue of gross inequality, abject poverty, magnified. I'm not trying to absorb worry of it or some of his lieutenants, like myself, we can't absorb ourselves of it. Remember, the day he came to power, I was in a meeting when he told us he was going to, to give the states over two trillion naira. We, we said, sir, why? He told us that some of the states did not pay salaries for 27 months. Across the board, it's not only PDP, it was also APC and the other Abga and others. Some did not pay up to six months. Don't talk of pension. Don't talk of uh, gratuities. When that happened, the system broke down. And the people started having one the idea of self-help. The day you allow the states to hands off. When we privatized something like this uh, distribution companies of electricity, between the privatization and today, we spent more money under the same private sector. The money you are spending, did it, was it used for the health of the, the Nigerian states? Was it used for education? Was it used for, 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 for okay. hospitals? It wasn't. Okay. Okay. The okay. hospitals okay. collapsed. Okay. The educational institutions okay. collapsed. OK, OK. Real quickly, as we start to wrap up, congratulations to former President Muhammadu Buhari. Save Aba. Say Buhari. And, and the truth has to be said as regards this matter that all the things, and I understand the ideology you were saying Buhari did represent, all those things he was supposed to do, those were the things he reneged against. President Buhari, other President Buhari, rent seeking increased. I understand the dichotomy between socialism, you know, captains of industry without industry, and all of that. But it was under Buhari we had massive rent seeking that was occasioned by overprinting of money. President Buhari, dollar to the naira, was a little over 100, 200 naira. He claimed he was going to, or he had campaigned vigorously, he was going to get one to one, one dollar to one naira. And you can see it terminated at over 600 before he came in. President Tinubu that took over for President Buhari has said many times that President Buhari has caused a lot of problems for them in the economy. This same government. Because you, you served in both government. You served in Buhari. You were still DG until recently. You, so you served in Tinubu's government. This same Tinubu's government had said President Buhari did not do well in so many, so many areas. So... I understand he's celebrating his birthday. You have to talk good about him. He's a great man to people that 
is loved and appreciated. But to a lot of Nigerians, he brought pain, he brought suffering, he brought hardship. What would you say about that? Uh, thank you, Rufai. Please, do a demarcation or a dividing line. That when President Buhari released trillions of Naira to the states, will he be in a position to go and, and tell the, and uh, use a police or army to, to, to make the governors to deliver? When he even amended the 1999 constitution as rigid as it is, and said the state judiciaries should get direct funding, and the state legislature should get direct funding, and the governors went to Supreme Court. How would that succeed? When you know that outside the federal capital territory of the country, the rest of Nigerians are under the states and the local councils, and somebody engaged in the highest investment in agriculture post-1970 by any federal government and the states... But he was aloof. That's the problem. encourage it to... He was aloof. That's what people say about President Buhari. Even, even Mr. Uh, Shitu, former minister that served under Buhari, came on national TV and said it, that if Buhari <coughs> gave me a tax to do, he would not even follow up. He was aloof. He was just like, I don't care. That's why a lot of the things, deplorable things that happened, happened. You can't be a leader and be aloof now. It's not done. You two, you know and that. The, contradic the contradictions. Can I tell you about the contradictions of your statement? If Buhari goes around with the whip, the same critics will say that the man is a dictator. We know him. What I'm trying to draw the line, I'm happy that President Tinubu agrees that there are salient policies of President Buhari who must continue. I thank President uh, Tinubu for that. He did not go with the mob to dismiss all the good works that President Buhari had done. He had consistently said that he would continue the good work Buhari had done. But it's very easy, we didn't f we forget easily that the oil won't fall or caught for five times between 1986 and 2022. And we didn't ask ourselves, why was it not used to develop our infrastructure? It's because we went the wrong, we, we followed the wrong assumption. I hope we do, do not continue. The other time, the World Bank said we should increase the fuel pump price. The World Bank is not looking at the health of the 99% of Nigerians. I think that's what Buhari had maintained, that it's good to yeah. look at the health of your Dr. country, Chukum. in spite of the, the damages that have done on the Mr. ground. Kichukum. I'm not trying to absorb him that there were no missing points. When he came to his security, we warned him. We said if you did not find the insecurity head on, yeah, that it will rupture your programs on agriculture, it will destroy all. But outside that, for God's sake, we cannot forget the fact that okay. Mr. somebody Kichiko, had the common man go now. We as a center point. Thank you very much. Well, this personality cults uh, that uh, the loyalists of politicians are creating, I bet you. Very soon, we are going to have some people who will come up and say they are also Tinubuists, or they will say they are Jagaba, Jagabanists. <laughs> but very interesting the way we uh, iconize or idolize some of our. <laughs>